Hi folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got a San Remo knife for you. This is the 7074. It comes in three different colors. That is, they're all satin on the uh, show and backside, but the beveled edges are anodized three different ways. This is the LUC-SCY. And there's a, another one that's a rainbow colored edge and another one that they're calling silver, but looks more like gold. And this one's called bronze and it looks uh, you know, a lot like a bronzy coppery kind of color on the edge there. It's a, you know, a small size knife under three inches, frame lock, pocket clip, right side tip down only, hollow grind, drop point, recurve, and if I haven't said everything so far, and I haven't, you'll probably want to stick around for the rest of the review. Let's start off by talking about this handle. It's a stainless steel. They don't say what kind of steel it is. What they do is they anodize the entire thing. And uh, when I took it apart, I'll show you the inside of it. You can see that the inside is anodized. And then they just sand off the uh, faces of both sides here to get the uh, this sort of satin look here and then the anodized look everywhere else, like inside this cutout here for the relief to turn that uh, frame lock arm into a spring and on the bevel around the outside edges everywhere. Torx screws on the whole handle, uh, no lanyard hole. Some of you guys are gonna not like that. A lot of us for a knife this size, you know, we never use a lanyard hole anyway. Pocket clip, it's fully functional, works great, right side tip down only, no option to put it on the other side or on either end, but for what it does, it does work very well. It looks kind of odd. I don't really like the looks of it, but it is, uh, you know, functional. Frame lock, and we've got 8CR14 MOV steel, although it doesn't say that on the steel itself. You'll have to look it up on certain websites where you buy it. You can get three different color models at GearBest. Uh, the LUC SCR is the silver gold kind of color. Uh, I know those don't look like the same color, but trust me, that's sort of what it looks like. I'll show you a picture of it right now. And then the LUC SCX is the rainbow anodized edges, just like you saw on that Kubi knife that I reviewed. And San Renmu makes that knife that Kubi rebrands, and it's totally legit. It's just a rebranding kind of thing. And this knife, um, you know, comes in at a pretty good price. You're talking uh, $10, a little over $10, $10.10 US. Uh, Canadian, it's about $13.05, uh, $8.50 in euros, and about $7.80 in pounds, British pounds. So, you know, that's roughly the price. Uh, give or take a little bit on the different colors. You know, it just really depends on where you buy it and everything. We've got a drop point blade with a nice swedge coming down. That drop point starts right at the pocket clip and goes all the way down. And then we've got a hollow grind with a nice belly on the knife here, a, a sharp tip, a very tiny bit of a recurve, sharpener's choil right there, and thumb studs that uh, you know look quite nice and they are very effective. We've got just a little bit of writing on the Ricasso of the blade right here. That's the model number. Let's talk about some of the more details on this thing. There's no, um, you know, grinding out on the inside of these, you know, the steel frame to make it any lighter. And that would have been a good thing because for the size of the knife, it's just slightly heavier than I'd like it to be. Uh, the pillars or have that hourglass kind of shape and you know that look you can see it pretty well here but if you're on a mobile device you can't see it that way well i'll give you a close-up shot of that we've got washers in here we've got teflon washers and phosphor bronze washers two on each side so one phosphor bronze and one teflon and then on the other side we've got phosphor bronze next to the blade and then teflon next to the frame of the handle and that allows it to have really good slickness and it just slides very, very well. Uh, it's very easy to flick this knife open. <laughs> That's with some authority. 
and you can just make it fly open. And that's even when I've tightened this a little bit extra. Um, I did open it up to take the pictures of the inside to see those washers, and I put it to, back together after that, and it, I put it back together just a little bit too tight, and still those washers are allowing it to just fly right out with a lot of authority. And uh, it's a pretty good detent holding it closed. Uh, it lines up dead center, the blade centering when it's closed. Lock up on this particular one is a little later than I'd like a new knife to be, but I've had this guy for eight months. It's another one of those cases where I thought I did the review already, but I guess I hadn't. And uh, somebody wanted to buy that Kubi knife, but I'd already given it away. And then I remembered I have this one, you know, it's the same exact shape and everything. Um, so I was going to let them have this one. And uh, then I realized I hadn't done the review yet. So I'm doing that quickly now before I mail this off to them. And, uh, you know, everything's in really, really good condition. I would just like the lockup to be a little bit later, sorry, a little bit earlier. Uh, there's still lots of life in that lock. Let's talk about the sizes for everything. Cutting edge and the blade length are the same. 6.7 centimeters, 2.6 inches. The blade thickness back here at the thumb riser with the jimping. I didn't mention the jimping before. That jimping is, you know, just aggressive enough to give you good purchase. It is 2.4 millimeters, which is 0 0.095 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind on this particular knife right here is 0.5 millimeters, half a millimeter exactly, exactly what I want a knife to be. The uh, handle length, nine centimeters, 3.54 inches. The grip area, so right around, well, let's say this, between my fingernails that you see right there, that's what I'm calling the grip area, 7.4 centimeters, 2.9 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 8.5 millimeters, that's a third of an inch, 0.333 inches. And the total length of the knife when it's open, blade deployed, 15.7 centimeters, 6.14 inches. It weighs 92 grams, which is 3.2 ounces. And as I was thinking, since it's solid steel and only, you know, six inches long, it should be less than three ounces. It would be good if it was. Uh, they could have milled out the inside of the steel maybe a little bit. That's going to make it cost a little bit more though. It's a very budget knife. You know, it doesn't cost very much. I told you the price is ready. $10 US roughly for this knife. Very, very good price. Better than the Kubi price for the exact same knife. Unique features. Yeah, there's nothing really unique about this. It's a nice knife. It looks good. Um, it's their own design, so it's not a copy of anything. Uh, I like that the recurve is just enough that it's there to help you cut, but not so much to make it difficult to sharpen. Uh, it looks good, has smooth action, solid lockup, decent steel on the blade, 8 CR14, it's about 57 Rockwell hardness, good Chinese steel for a budget knife. Nothing special, but nothing bad either. Um, you know, Cons, for some people, this lanyard hole might be a con. For other people, it's a plus. For me, it's a plus that there's no lanyard hole because I wouldn't use it on a knife this size anyway. Um, you know, the only other con is a little bit my own particular issue. It might not apply to you. My skin gets, you know, oily very, very easily. And so with this satin finish on the outside and satin finish on the blade, this is a fingerprint magnet tremendously. <laughs> So, and that's a totally personal kind of thing. Um, it's like this thing's working for the FBI or something. Because the fingerprints just are everywhere. Uh, the other thing is with the smooth face on here, it will leave uh, marks like snail, not snail trails as easily as a uh, titanium handle scale. But if you put this in your pocket with a set of keys and stuff, you're going to start seeing marks on here fairly soon. You know, and that's just the way it goes, even with the blade closed. If you're wondering what it looks like in a pocket, there you go. The retention is really good. It goes in and out very well. It don't, doesn't take a lot of extra pressure and it sits down to the bottom. And we've got, you know, just over a centimeter, less than half of an inch of knife showing and a short little pocket clip. 
so it hides quite well. If you see any of my knives on my channel and you want to buy it, if it's a really a super inexpensive knife, it's not going to be worth it for just one knife. Uh, you might want to put together a bundle of knives that you might want. Uh, contact me, and if I think we can come up with a fair price, I'll let you know what that is. And if you agree with it, you know, we'll do it. Uh, but remember, I do need to get a fair price for these things. I only get some of these knives for free. A lot of them I buy with my own money. And uh, I'm really trying to raise some funds to help take care of my mother. And my own personal budget, you know, is tight. So that's just the way it is. Let's do some cut tests. Got this one inch wide Molly banding stuff. It just zips through that super, super easy. You want to see that again? It just flies through this stuff. No problem at all. Let's try some of this uh, Ethernet cable that I've got. You know, that's a network cable. You've got eight strands of copper in here, so it is harder to cut through it. There's those eight cables in there. Each has their own sheathing. And then that gray sheathing is rather thick as well. And yet, it still cuts paper super, super well. So there you go. What do you think of this knife? What do you like, dislike? Let me know about that. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.